Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, welcome to Habit 7 of the 7 Habits of Highly Effective People book club. Um, this is the last habit of the book. Um, this is sharpening the saw or self-renewal, self-care. And um, I originally planned on coming on and apologizing for this video being so late for not having um, done the live stream for this video and just for not finishing off this book club the way that I originally intended. Um, a lot of things happen and to make a long story short, um, I was extremely sick and not well and um, I was going to apologize for it, but I'm not going to. Um, it's kind of funny, not funny that I was sick, but that it all happened um, right at the same time that I was supposed to be doing um, a chapter on self-care because the reason why I got so sick and um, was not able to do this chapter on self-care is because I was not keeping up with my self-care and my self-renewal um, so the timing couldn't have been more perfect um, and that's the reason why I'm not going to apologize for it um, because I want this to be a lesson to everyone um, of why sharpening the saw and self-care and self-renewal is so important. I, um, For those of you who don't follow my channel or um, just don't know much about me, I have a lot going on right now. Um, my fiance is a chef and he just got a big promotion to executive sous chef, sous chef excuse me, at um, his current job. Um, before this promotion, we were kind of in limbo about whether he would be getting this same position at another um, restaurant in another state. So we didn't know if we would be relocating to another state. Um, we are in the middle of wedding planning. Um, we are getting ready to move to our new apartment in two weeks from the time that I'm filming this video. Now that we know that we are not relocating to another state, um, we have made the decision to homeschool our rising second grader. And I also have a baby who will be seven months in a few days at the time of me recording this video. Um, on top of the normal day-to-day -day things, YouTube, blog, um, and all that stuff. And here recently I have started co-hosting local planner meetups. Um, I have been getting some sponsored opportunities for my blog and for YouTube. And I've been getting opportunities to host planner workshops um, locally. And one that I have coming up in October that is it's still local, it's still in the state of North Carolina, um, but it's a couple hours away from me. So preparing for that. So there's a lot going on. But in the midst of all that, I have been dropping the ball with my self-care. So I have not been exercising um, at all. No, I can't even say regularly. I have not been exercising at all. Um, I have not been eating as well as I should be. Um, I have been, I have chronic migraines as well for those of you who don't know. So I have been keeping on top of my migraine medicine because for those of you know, who know anything about chronic migraines and know about me and my migraines, if I get one, I am down and out. Um, I can't do anything. So I really can't afford to get them. So I've been on top of that, but um, I just have not been taking care of myself the way I should. Um, I also suffer from bipolar disorder and anxiety disorder. And um, with everything that's going on, although everything that is going on is positive things, it's still a lot. Um, so I have been getting quite overwhelmed um, with everything going on with my planner. And I basically reached a stage of just burnout. And I just got burnt out with my planner, with planning, with my YouTube, with my blog, just with life in general. Um, and I just went down for the count. So I did not want to look at my planner. I did not look at my planner. Um, and that's pretty much what I had to do. I have, um, I'm actually going to be doing a video about burnout, um, specifically relating to planner burnout and things like that. So I'll talk more about it in that video. Um, but basically that's what happened. Um, and I had felt it coming on for a couple weeks. Um, even when I did, um, 
even maybe when we were at like habit five and six I kind of felt it coming on but I tried to fight through it and then eventually it just overwhelmed me and I just I couldn't fight it anymore so um, I just kind of went down and I got to the point where I just just put the brakes on everything um, so I didn't watch any YouTube videos related to planning and planners I didn't do anything in my planner I didn't do anything related to us moving I did literally the bare essentials I took care of my kids I kept my house at its bare minimum so it was cleaned um, there was no trash there was no clutter um, we were fed and we were clothed and that was it um, anything that was not an absolute necessity did not get done um, I am feeling much better as you guys can see I'm back to filming um, <laughs> but I, I just really had to step back and um, reevaluate a lot of things so there will be a lot of changes coming to um, just my life in general to my youtube channel my blog um, where i'm going with things and there'll be a video coming with that as well um, but i definitely of course wanted to get this last habit out um, for those of you that have been following along um, i didn't want you guys waiting too long to get this last habit i know some people um, are behind because you've been working at your own pace so um, by the time you see this video it may not be a big deal to you because by the time you make it to it um, it may be way past the time that I actually filmed it but for those of you who were following along in real time um, of the book club thank you so much for sticking with me um, thank you so much for the well wishes that you guys posted on my Facebook page when I let you know that I wasn't feeling well it really really means a great deal to me that you guys are so understanding um it just being in the youtube world um youtubers sometimes it's just it's just a whole nother world sometimes and i feel like um sometimes people hold youtubers to a different standard and they don't realize that you know we are real people we are humans we are moms we are you know we have families you know things happen and we can't stick to you know editorial calendars and schedules and things like that so um, it just it really makes me feel great to know that you know people out there understand that hey I am still human I am still a mom I still have kids at home so you know when things happen like someone knocking on the door while I'm recording or you know me not feeling well or something like that um, you guys understand and not only do you understand um, you are willing to stick with me um, and work with me um, just as things happen so um, it's crazy we are on habit seven we are on the last habit of the book um, this has been, this has been, um, really eye-opening. Like I said, the timing could not have been better. Um, I had already read this chapter. Like I said, I had already started feeling a little overwhelmed and burnt out when we were around habit five or six, but it really started setting in, um, after I did um i think i did a recording for habit six because of um i think I, we had some thunderstorms or something if i remember correctly but um so i had already read habit seven um to prepare for the book club and then after i wasn't able to do um the live stream and while i was out i was like you know what I know what's going on um, and I didn't know when I would be back and up and about and um, just ready to record again and things like that so I figured why not focus some more on my self-care because I knew that's what the issue was so I came back and I read this again and not from the perspective of wanting to teach it to you guys but from the perspective of wanting to get as much information as possible to apply it to my life and my situation so i went through this uh habit a second time i really went through the workbook um you guys may have noticed that i have not been referencing the workbook as much um the past few habits because what i have noticed from the workbook is that um once you get into the second habit maybe habit three the workbook um, again, I, I mentioned at the very, very beginning of this book club, you can get through the book club with just the book. Um, you can, you don't need the workbook. The workbook is definitely recommended. I, I highly recommend it. Um, 
but in the workbook it just it asks you questions it has exercises that take you um, more in depth into the material um, but as you go into the habits um, I haven't been referencing the workbook because I feel like the questions that are asked in the workbook they're very very um, subjective and opinionated so it wouldn't be any point in really bringing up the questions that are in the workbook because I could give you my opinion or my answers to those workbook questions but it really wouldn't help you in your personal situation so if you have the workbook then definitely work through them and so and that's what I did I took that workbook um, and like I said I read through um, habit seven a second time with the intent of getting the material to apply to my personal life not just taking this information to teach it to you guys but to apply it to what i was going through um in that moment and i actually went through and worked through the workbook like with what i was going through at that time on my mind um and creating a self-care routine knowing that we're getting ready to move in a couple weeks um in two weeks and um I'll be setting up new daily routines and household routines and stuff like that in our new home and um, just creating a self-care routine based on that new schedule that we're going to have and things like that. So um, it was very, very helpful. So again, I highly recommend if you have the workbook, definitely use it. Go through and really do the exercises. If you don't have the workbook, I would highly suggest you get it. Um, and, and really um, just go through the exercises. Even if you, like I said, in the beginning of this um, book club, I did say that I don't recommend getting like a Kindle version of the workbook. But um, even if you do, if that's a cheaper option and you do do that and you have like a journal or a notebook or a section of your planner that you use um, to work through those questions, um, you can do that as well. But I really, really recommend getting the workbook because it is very, very helpful. But I'm going to go ahead and jump into the material. Um, so habit seven is sharpen the saw. Um, it's the principles of balanced self-renewal. So um, Stephen Covey starts the section. I'm just paraphrasing the little scenario that he gives at the beginning. Um, so he's basically talking about if you came across someone in the woods and he is um, working really really hard trying to saw down a tree um and you ask him what he's doing and he's like can't you see i'm trying to saw down this tree you tell him that he looks exhausted and you know ask him how long has he been going at it and he tells you you know five hours six hours what do you say five hours um and he said you know and i'm tired this is really hard so he's like why don't you take a break you know you tell him why don't you take a break for a few minutes and sharpen your saw um and you tell him, I'm pretty sure it would go a lot faster, you could saw down that tree a lot faster if you would sharpen your saw. And this person's like, I don't have time to sharpen my saw, I'm too busy sawing. And so um, he says, habit seven is taking time to sharpen the saw. It surrounds the other habits on the seven habits paradigm because it is the habit that makes all the others possible. It says, habit seven, is preserving and enhancing the greatest asset you have you it's renewing the four dimensions of your nature physical spiritual mental and social emotional so um he gives this uh diagram in here and it's it, it is in a circle um that is something that stood out to me immediately um it's not in any kind of linear form it's not like one thing is like higher than the other it's not like one thing comes before the other it's in a circle because for one um it's constantly happening it, it's never ending and for two no one thing takes precedence over the other um all four of these things are equally as important as the other so with physical he's saying exercise nutrition and stress management <clears throat> Social emotional is service, empathy, synergy, and intrinsic security. Spiritual is value, excuse me, value clarification and commitment, study and meditation. And mental is reading, visualizing, planning, and writing. It says, although different words are used, most philosophies of life deal either explicitly or implicitly with these four dimensions. Sharpen the saw basically means expressing all four motivations. It means exercising all four dimensions of our nature regularly and consistently in wise and balanced ways. So to do this, we must be proactive. 
taking time to sharpen the saw is a definite quadrant two activity and quadrant two must be acted on. Quadrant one, because of its urgency, acts on us. It presses upon us constantly. Um, it says it, quadrant two must be pressed upon until it becomes second nature, until it becomes a kind of healthy addiction. Because it's at the center of our circle of influence, no one else can do it for us. We must do it for ourselves. So quadrant two, if you guys remember, those are those activities that are very, very important to us. But again, because they're not urgent, they're not pressing on us. They're not nagging at us all the time to get them done. So although they're very, very important to us, we have to constantly remind ourselves or pressure ourselves or press upon ourselves to constantly do these things or act upon these things otherwise they won't get done so this is where your planning comes in you have to schedule in the time to do it you have to schedule in the time to go work out you may have to schedule in the time to um do your scripture writing or do your devotional or to read your bible or um whatever um spiritual literature that you read or you write or to do your journaling or to read for personal reading or whatever other thing scheduling time to go hang out with a friend um, go have coffee with a friend or whatever it is you have to do these things you have to press upon yourself because again it's not something that's going to nag at you like it needs to be done and this needs to be done right now therefore because it's not nagging at you constantly you're not going to remember to do them unless you actually schedule out these things so um, the first of the four dimensions is the physical dimension. And again, not the first as in this is the most important or this is the first one you act on. It's just the first one he has listed here. So it says the physical dimension involves caring effectively for our physical body, eating the right kinds of foods, getting sufficient rest and relaxation and exercising on a regular basis. Exercise is one of those quadrant two high leverage activities that most of us don't do consistently because it isn't urgent. And because we don't do it, sooner or later we find ourselves in quadrant one dealing with the health problems and crises that come as a natural result of our neglect. Same thing that I just had to deal with. Um, exercise wasn't my situation, mine was rest. Um, the whole rest and relaxation um, and stress management because that falls under physical um, exercise and stress management fall under physical um, let's see what else falls under. I'm trying to think of sleep I think sleep falls under physical as well and that's that was one of mine um, <clears throat> excuse me um, rest and relaxation relaxation might fall under mental we'll get to that in a second but um, sleep was one of mine um, and I, if you guys watch my plan with me, you'll see that managing my sleep cycle was off the lo a little bit. So I was basically sleeping as if I was working third shift. So I would be up all night until like 6 a.m. And then I would fall asleep at like 6 a.m. But because my baby wakes up at like 9 a.m., I would only sleep for about three hours and then I'd be up for the rest of the day. I couldn't really go back to sleep. Sometimes I would try to sneak in a nap for maybe an hour or so while my baby was sleeping. But then again, I still had my six-year-old at home, so I couldn't really nap for a long time. So I really wasn't sleeping. So that was a major cause of me um, kind of crashing and burning pretty much. Um, so sleep was a big one for me, but me not working out, out and um, not exercising was a big one as well. Um, he said, a good exercise program is one that you can do in your own home and one that will build your body in three areas, endurance, flexibility, and strength. So um, going forward, like some simple exercises that I have um, thought about and tried to implement for myself. We do have a family membership at the Y which really comes in handy because um, at the Y, they have childcare. So when we go to the gym, first of all, all of us can go as a family. My six month old can go to the child uh, watch area while we go and work out and our six year old, he can either come work out with us or he can go to the child watch area if he just wants to go and play. It just depends. If I'm going to like a group fitness class or something where he's not actually coming in and if his dad's not with us too, normally if all of us are going together, then he'll go upstairs to um, like the weightlifting and the indoor track area with his dad and they can work out and do their thing together. I'll go to a group fitness class or yoga class or something like that. Um, if it's just maybe just me and the boys because my fiance is at work 
and then again Grayson can go to the child watch area if I'm just you know doing laps around the track or if I'm just going on the treadmill or something like that CJ can be with me or he can go to the child watch area as well if he just wants to play so that is a great benefit of having a family membership at the Y um, other things that I can do that don't involve me really leaving as much um, I sometimes I just get out on the floor and I crawl around with Grayson because he's starting to crawl now I can use him because he's 17 and a half pounds now sometimes I can get on the floor and I can use him as a weight and basically lift him as weights I can put him in the stroller and I can walk laps around our apartment complex so there's different things that I can do um, that make it really really simple for me to get that exercise in so I'm kind of knocking down any barriers that I have um, and some of the main barriers for me being a mom with young kids is childcare and where are my kids going to go when I work out so I have ways that I can include them in my workout and again having that family membership at the Y I have a specific place that they can go which is at the gym with me while I'm working out um, so he, in the next couple sections, he actually goes in and talks about um, endurance and flexibility and strength and basically um, different ways you should structure your um, exercise routines and things like that. But um, I feel like that's all a matter of personal preference and your um, level of physical fitness and things like that and um, something that you could, you should consult your health professional, um, a personal trainer, um, so things like that. So me personally, I feel like that information really should not have been in this book because again, I feel like that information is just too personal to be generalized like this, especially in that small section. Um, so I just kind of skipped over that. Um, but basically he said, the essence of renewing the physical dimension is to sharpen the saw to exercise our bodies on a regular basis in a way that will preserve and enhance our capacity to work and adapt and enjoy. It says, probably the greatest benefit you'll experience from exercising will be the development of your habit one muscles of proactivity. As you act based on the value of physical well-being instead of reacting to all the forces that keep you from exercising, your paradigm of yourself, your self-esteem, your self-confidence, and your integrity will be profoundly affected. So, um, I really do like that because, again, that goes back to what I, I just said, um, by being proactive, by knowing what issues you may have, what barriers you may have to exercising, um, and knowing what they are ahead of time, this is the same thing I say when it comes to anything that you are planning. Um, by being proactive, by knowing what potential obstacles am I going to have, and setting out to kind of knock those obstacles down before you even set out, plan accordingly, plan around those obstacles. So again, my number one obstacle to me exercising is my two young children. It's not um, my health. I, I do have some health issues that may be an obstacle, but they're not big obstacles. Um, they're just minor things. And for the most part, it's just for a matter of me just starting slow with my exercising and building up to what I can tolerate my major issue is my two young kids so whatever your major obstacle is whether it is your health um whether it's the time because you work a crazy schedule um maybe you're on call all the time so know what your barriers are be proactive habit one and plan accordingly um the next one is the spiritual dimension so it says renewing the spiritual dimension provides leadership to your life it's highly related to habit two before we go um, forward, this is another thing that I really, really like about Habit 7, and you probably have noticed it already, but um, as we go through the different dimensions, <clears throat> excuse me, he starts pointing out how, because at the beginning he says that um, Habit 7 um, makes all the other habits possible, and so he actually shows how habit seven or not habit seven how each of these different dimensions are related to the other habits so I really like that so you can really tie these all these habits back together so again he said the spiritual dimension is highly related to habit two it says the spiritual dimension is your core your center your commitment to your value system it's a very private area of life and a supremely important one it draws upon the sources that inspire and uplift you and tie you to the timeless truths of all humanity and people do it very very differently 
Um, so he went on and he talks, you know, he gives his examples um, about people he's met in his life and different things like that. Um, he said, spiritual renewal takes an investment of time, but it's a quadrant two activity we don't really have time to neglect. So the idea is that when we take time to draw on the leadership center of our lives, what life is ultimately all about, it spreads like an umbrella over everything else. It renews us, it refreshes us, particularly if we recommit to it. This is why I believe a personal mission statement is so important. If we have a deep understanding of our center and our purpose, we can review and recommit to it frequently. In our daily, excuse me, in our daily spiritual renewal, we can visualize and live out the events of the day in harmony with those values. Um, I really, really um, strongly believe in having that um, that personal mission statement. When we did um, that habit on having a personal mission statement, um, I spoke about it. Um, I have one, I did it because again, I used to use the Franklin Covey system. Um, I still use the system even though I don't use the Franklin Covey inserts. I still use that system um, even in my Traveler's Notebook and in my Hobonichi. Um, but I have my personal mission statement, I have my governing values, I have them all written out in my, in my planner now. And um, what he's saying is very true to me. I have my personal mission statement and I don't review my personal mission statement um, on a daily basis <laughs> at all. Um, I don't think that's necessary. I don't review it on a weekly basis. I do view it on a monthly basis because on a monthly basis, I am looking at my goals and my goals are in that same section. Um, I look at my quarterly goals and my quarterly goals are in the same section that I have my long range goals and my governing values and my personal mission statement. I have all that stuff written out in that same section. So when I sit down and I do my monthly planning, um, I glance at my quarterly goals and I just take a quick glance at my governing values. I take a quick glance at my personal mission statement um, and I just take a quick glance at everything just to make sure that everything is still on track, that um, that mission statement that I have, that those governing values, that all of those things are what I still believe in because even within a month's time, things may change and I may need to update it. I may need to change it. Very rarely do I. Um, on a quarterly basis, sometimes I do update it. When I moved from my ring balance system to my traveler's notebook system, which was in June, July, um, at the beginning of July, I did update um, my mission statement a little bit because in that time, um, we had made the decision to homeschool um, our rising second grader. He's almost seven now. I want to call him my six-year-old, but he's going to be seven next month, so I got to get used to calling him seven-year-old. But um, we had made the decision to homeschool him, so I wanted to have um, something in my personal mission statement and something in my governing values that related to um, me wanting to provide a good education to him because I am now going to be the sole provider of his education that's not going to be in the hands of the public education system anymore. So I did update it. Um, so again, it may change on a monthly basis, it may change on a quarterly basis, but I do review it. Again, it's not on a daily basis, but if I feel like on a daily basis I need to glance at it, it's in my planner and I can, but um, it is definitely highly recommended to have one. Um, so he moves on to the mental dimension says most of our mental development and study discipline comes through formal education but as soon as we leave the external discipline of school many of us let our minds atrophy we don't do any more serious reading we don't explore new subjects in any real depth outside our action fields we don't think analytically we don't write at least not critically or in a way that tests our ability to express ourselves in distilled clear and concise language instead we spend our time watching tv um, and then he moves on, he says, there's no better way to inform and expand your mind on a regular basis than to get into the habit of reading good literature. That's another high leverage quadrant two activity. You can get into the best minds that are, that are now or that have ever been in the world. I highly recommend starting with the goal of a book a month, then a book every two weeks, then a book a week. The person who doesn't read is no better off than the person who can't read. I really, really... I love reading. I really, really love reading. And I really fell out of the habit of reading for just personal, um, just for personal gain. Um, I got into the habit of 
reading um like nonfiction and um business books and things like that to learn and there's there's nothing wrong with that but um I got out of the habit of just reading just fiction um just just for personal enjoyment um so actually starting in August I actually am starting a reading challenge for myself um to read I just started off with just four books a month um, I know I can read much more than that but just with everything we have going on especially because we're moving in August and um my son will be seven my fiance's birthday is in August so we have a lot of things going on um, I didn't want to take on too much but um I I just I truly believe this a lot of people um, I was in a Facebook group a couple of weeks ago and that was a topic of discussion <clears throat> that came up like how many people, how many of you like read regular, regularly just for personal enjoyment and many people answered the same way. They hadn't read anything since high school or since college. Um, they just they just hadn't like they hadn't read anything like outside of their profession, like anything that they weren't required to read um, for their profession or for their job and um it, it is it is sad um and there are people who who enjoy reading and they do it and it just makes them happy and that's the type of person i am but i haven't done it in a while because um and it's not that i stopped reading it's just i stopped reading for personal enjoyment i was reading a lot um to gain knowledge and again there's nothing wrong with that but um i feel like that contributed to my burnout um because I was reading even something like this, even something like Seven Habits or Ten Natural Laws by Hiram W. Smith or um, something like The Miracle Morning or any, anything that's about productivity or success or something like that. Even if it's something that I would read to um, take the information to personally apply it to my life, at the back of my mind, I'm always thinking about how can I teach this to you guys? How can I present this information on my YouTube channel um, and teach it to you guys? And, and there's nothing wrong with that because I love sharing the information with you guys. I love helping others, um, but it still seems like work. And that's kind of where I hit that burnout mark because every time I would watch a planner video, even if it was like a pretty decorated planner, I'm still looking at, oh, I like how pretty that looks how can I teach that to someone on my channel? Or, you know, I like how they use this thing in their plan or functionally, how can I teach that on, on their channel? So it's like, even things that should just be for my pure enjoyment, I was always looking at it with a, a work mindset. Um, and so I, I have to find a way to get out of that. And it's kind of hard when your work is something that you love so much and you're so passionate about. So I'm having, that's that's kind of my struggle right now. Um, and what I'll talk about more when I do that burnout video is how to kind of find that divide <laughs> of, um, you know, how can I kind of turn it off sometimes. But again, that's where my fiction books come in. And um, if you watch my planner setup video um, for One Book July, you will see that massive books to read list that I have in my collections book um, with like the Pulitzer Prize winners and the Newbery Award winners for fiction and the Man Booker Award uh, winners for fiction. I have a massive, massive list of books that I want to read and they're all fiction and they are all just purely for enjoyment. There's nothing I could possibly teach um, related to planning and productivity and organizing and lifestyle and stuff like that the direction that i'm taking my channel in there's nothing i can really teach um out of those books so, so i'm just going to read them just for pure enjoyment um that's the plan anyway <laughs> so the next thing he also says is that writing is another powerful way to sharpen the mental saw so keeping a journal of our thoughts experiences insights and learnings promotes mental clarity exactness and context writing good letters communicating on the deeper level of thoughts feelings and ideas rather than on the shallow superficial level of um, events also affects our ability to think clearly to reason accurately and to be understood effectively um, that is something that i am doing as well um, 
I used to have a, I don't have it in here, I used to have my spiritual journal that I had in a personal size traveler's notebook um, and that was not working for me because I feel like I had it like too sectioned off and too just I was just trying to do too much with it and um, it just wasn't working so what I started doing is um, I have a Coco Daisy subscription and as part of my Coco Daisy subscription I get the the Daisy Dory the little um, traveler's notebook inserts it's a standard size traveler's notebook insert and I have it inside my A5 traveler's notebook as you can see it's quite chunky but um, I love having it in here even though it's not the same size as my A5 inserts and what I do with it is this is my journal and whatever comes to mind that I want to journal about is what I journal about. I had um, this thing that I found by um, Era Glass that says give yourself permission to suck and I wrote that in there and then I was um, I put my August goals in here and then I was journaling about how I was feeling with my um, my burnout so I journaled about that in there and I just have space um, if I want to do scripture writing in here I can do scripture writing in here if I just want to put notes about what happened if I want to um, put in some pictures and do some memory keeping in here so by combining um, because I don't do any particular type of journaling um, every day. I don't do scripture writing every day. I don't do gratitude journaling. I don't do like dear diary type journaling. I don't do memory keeping. Um, sometimes I like to do creative journaling like short stories and poetry. Um, I used to take creative writing classes in high school um, and college and I don't do anything every single day so it made no sense to have a specific journal for each of those things so now by having one journal and again because I have a couple days subscription I get one of these every month um, so by having one journal whatever pops in my mind that I decide I want to journal about I put it in that one journal and by having it in my planner I have it with me at all times so again whenever I feel led to write about whatever I want to write about I have that with me and that's been a great outlet for me um, when I just have feelings like I said with this this burnout and borderline depression that I've been feeling I've been able to just get everything off my mind off my heart and just write it out and it's just been great um, as we all know organizing and planning represent other forms of mental renewal associated with habits two and three it's beginning with the end in mind and being able to mentally organize and excuse me being able mentally to organize to accomplish that end it's exercising the visualizing imagining power of your mind to see the end from the beginning and to see the entire journey at least in principles if not in steps um, for a lot of people um, which is the reason why you see so many plan with me videos even though some people feel like they're more like decorate with me videos even though it's that's a more creative outlet that's that's a mental renewal for some people um that's that's what they do planning and organizing relieves mental stress it, it does for me um at least it used to for a while again now because the lines are starting to blur between um relieving stress and causing stress because um my planning is not just like my personal planning anymore planning is now kind of my job um, and it's work and I have to look at it from that aspect as well so again trying to figure out how to unblur those lines and create a divide but for some people being able to plan being able to organize that's why when some people are stressed they go clean and they go organize because it, it's, a, it's a form of um, mentally just de-stressing and renewing their mind it says that um, sharpening the saw in the first three dimensions, the physical, the spiritual, and the mental is a practice that I call the daily private victory. Um, and this is from, I was about to say David Allen. I don't know why getting things done is in my brain right now. This is coming from Stephen Covey. He's saying it is a practice that he calls the daily private victory. <clears throat> Excuse me. He says, I recommend to you the simple practice of spending one hour a day every day doing it one hour a day for the rest of your life and a note that I put to myself is um, many of us are already doing this daily 
maybe you're not doing it all together and sometimes you're me you may be doing it for more than an hour so he said that there's no other way you could spend an hour that would begin to compare with the daily private victory in terms of value and results it will affect every decision every relationship it will greatly improve the quality the effectiveness of every other hour of the day including the depth the, and restfulness of your sleep it will build the long-term physical, spiritual, and mental strength to enable you to handle difficult challenges in life. So again, when I say this, many people have like, um, many people get up and they have their, their morning time. Um, I know a lot of people talk about doing the miracle morning um, that was created by Hal Elrod. I've heard um, on YouTube here lately, a lot of people are doing morning pages. Um, many people just have their morning time they have their coffee and they do their morning devotionals or they do scripture writing or their daily Bible study or whatever it is they do many people get up in the morning and they just go straight to exercising um, <clears throat> excuse me the Franklin Covey system um, if you go back to um, Hiram W Smith in the 10 natural laws he actually advocates for doing 15 minutes of planning first thing in the morning. I know a lot of people nowadays prefer to do that. Um, me personally, because I'm not a morning person, I do my daily planning the night before. So I set up my daily page the night before because I'm not a morning person. So I know exactly what to look forward to for the next day. I have everything set up. I know what's coming up the next day. I know what tasks I have to do. I know what appointments. I know what the weather's gonna be for tomorrow. I know what clothes I need to lay out. I know if I need to thaw meet out for dinner for the next day things like that so i do that the night before some people do it the morning of um so a lot of people again you're already doing these things um every day and again like i said you're you may not be doing it all together so you may not get up and do like your spiritual renewal and then do your mental renewal which may be your planning or um some kind of maybe um I think meditation would go with the spiritual. So for the mental renewal, again, it could be morning pages if you're doing some kind of writing or journaling. Um, it could be, and see, it gets a little blurred because again, if you do like scripture writing, you would think writing, journaling would be mental, but that would be more spiritual. But again, however you choose to do it, many people are already doing this. You just don't think about it. And that's, that's something that we've touched on in some of the other habits. A lot of people are already doing a lot of these habits. You just don't think about them in the terms that are laid out in this book. You don't think about it in these terms. You're not consciously um, or intentionally doing it. And that's the whole purpose of reading this book and being aware of the habits and being aware of what these things, because you want to be intentionally doing these things and not just doing them but not really aware that you're doing them or not really knowing what you're doing or why you're doing them you know what they are you know why you're doing them and you know what what the end is you know you kind of begin with that end in mind you know why you're doing this because you know what you want to accomplish in the end um so then he moves on to the social and emotional dimension he says while the physical spiritual and mental dimensions are closely related to habits one two and three centered on the principles of personal vision, leadership, and management, the social and emotional dimension focuses on habits four, five, and six, centered on the principles of interpersonal leadership, empathic communication, and creative cooperation. The social and emotional dimensions of our lives are tied together because our emotional life is primarily, but not exclusively, developed out of and manifested in our relationship with others. It says, Renewing our social and emotional dimension does not take time in the same sense that renewing the other dimensions does. We can do it in our normal everyday interactions with other people, but it definitely requires exercise. We may have to push ourselves because many of us have not achieved the level of private victory and the skills of public victory necessary for habits four, five, and six to come naturally to us in all of our interactions. Now, I normally don't read um the examples that he gives and things like that in the book but um i feel like this particular example is a really good way to see how all of these things work together so this one i am going to read so this one says suppose that you are a key person in my life you might be my boss my subordinate my co-worker my friend my neighbor my spouse my child a member of my extended family anyone with whom I want or need to interact. 
suppose we need to communicate together, to work together, to discuss a jugular issue, to accomplish a purpose or solve a problem, but we see things differently. We're looking through different glasses. You see the young lady, I see the old woman. Again, going back to the beginning of the book. It says, so I practice habit four. I come to you and I say, I can see that we're approaching this situation differently. Why don't we agree to communicate until we can find a solution we both feel good about? Would you be willing to do that? Most people would be willing to say yes to that. Then I move to habit five. Let me listen to you first. Instead of listening with intent to reply, I listen empathically in order to deeply, thoroughly understand your paradigm. When I can explain your point of view as well as you can, then I focus on communicating my point of view to you so that you can understand it as well. Based on the commitment to search for a solution that we both feel good about and a deep understanding of each other's points of view, we move to habit six. We work together to produce third alternative solutions to our differences that we both recognize are better than the ones either you or I proposed initially. Success in habits four, five, and six is not primarily a matter of intellect, it's primarily a matter of emotion. It's highly related to our sense of personal security. Um, the reason why I pointed that out, excuse me, the reason why I pointed that out is because, again, it allows you to see how habits four, five, and six work together in what would be considered a somewhat normal conversation. Now, we all know that conversation may not be worded like that. Um, it's worded like that because those are Stephen Covey's words and he's the one that kind of came up with these habits and these concepts. But um, just in a normal conversation with the thought process that we want to listen to each other, we being the two people communicating with each other, we want to listen to each other. We both want to come to a solution that is um, beneficial for both of us and this is how we're going to approach the situation so again that was a good way to see how habits four five and six work well with each other um, and like I said I normally don't read the examples that he gives but that one I, I did want to point out um, so he actually went on to say he said I believe that a life of integrity um, is the most fundamental source of personal worth. I do not agree with the popular success literature that says self-esteem is primarily a matter of mindset, of attitude, that you can psych yourself into peace of mind. Peace of mind comes when your life is in harmony with true principles and values and in no other way. Um, that little tidbit comes from, if you go back to um, the example that I read, um, when he was talking about Success in habits four, five, and six is not primarily a matter of intellect. It's primarily a matter of, mo of emotion. It's highly related to our sense of personal security. Um, and he went on to say that um, if our personal security comes from sources within ourselves, um, then we have the strength to practice those habits. Um, if we are emotionally insecure, um, even though we may be intellectually very advanced, um, practicing habits four, five, and six with people who think differently on jugular issues of life can be terribly threatening. And um, I actually had a conversation with my fiance after I finished reading this book, not this book, this chapter the first time, because I found that um, sometimes we disagree on what would be considered jugular issues. And we both are of pretty high intellect and um, there may be times where the conversations do not go like that example went and sometimes it leaves me pretty baffled because I'm like okay we don't agree um, but just because we don't agree that doesn't mean that either one of us is wrong going back to just like he said you may see the old lady i may see the young woman and that's in my mind that's what i'm thinking i'm thinking that okay this is what you think this is what i think but that doesn't mean that either one of us is wrong so why is this conversation going left field and so when i read that it made sense and so i asked him the the question about the um being emotionally insecure 
And, you know, emotional insecurity can come from various things. It can come from um, loss and hurt in previous relationships and just various different life experiences. Um, but we did have a conversation about it. And I, I feel like it's a very valid um, position. And it's something that I feel like you should keep in mind when you are talking to people, um, especially people who are a very high intellect who you know are a very high intellect and people who themselves know are a very high intellect and maybe that is something that um i'm trying to think of the nice way to say this people who um not necessarily brag about their high intellect but that is a very um that is something that they're very proud of. They're very proud of their high intellect and they like for it to be known that they are a very high intellect. You have to be very careful when you deal with them on those jugular issues, especially when there is an emotional um, relationship of any sort involved, whether it's a sibling, um, a family member, a very close friend, um, because if you if you're just talking to not even a colleague if you're just talking to maybe someone you happen to know like if you're talking to someone who just happens to work in the same field as you and they are a very high intellect in your particular field you have no emotional attachment to them they have no emotional attachment to you you guys can disagree on a very hot topic like a very hot button topic and you guys can disagree a lot and you can get into a heated disagreement but because there's not any emotion involved um, you can get to the point where you just agree to disagree and kind of walk away from it but when you have that emotional attachment um, with someone whether it be a closer colleague that you've worked with or again a family member or um, a sibling or a spouse um, you have to be very careful with that because it's like even though on an intellectual level you may be equal and normally you could just agree to disagree and walk away you have those emotional attachments that you can't just separate and walk away and that is what causes the argument to go left field and become something that it should not even be because when you look at it it's like this is what you think this is what I think that doesn't mean that either one of us is wrong because it's 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 one of those situations where it's opinion based no one is really wrong it's just your opinion it's my opinion there's no actual fact to it it's all opinions but again once you get those emotions involved so um that was something that like i said really really stuck out to me to where my fiance and i we actually had a good conversation about it but um, he moved on and he talks about scripting others. And I think I kind of moved into this without even knowing that this is what was coming next. So he said, most people are a function of the social mirror scripted by the opinions, the perceptions, the paradigms of the people around them. As interdependent people, you and I come from a paradigm which includes the realization that we are part of that social mirror. And I just noted people feed on the opinions and thoughts of others. And when I say that, I mean that we, um, when I say we feed on it, basically we are bothered um, in a good or bad way by how people think um, or how we think others think about us or how we think others feel about us or what we think others say about us or what we know others are saying about us. Um, we are either bothered or pleased or we, we, are, we feed on that. Um, either in a negative or positive way. It says, we can choose to reflect back to others a clear, undistorted vision of themselves. We can affirm their proactive nature and treat them as responsible people. We can help script them as principle-centered, value-based, independent, worthwhile individuals. And with the abundance mentality, we realize that giving a positive reflection to others in no way diminishes us. It increases us because it increases the opportunities for effective interaction with other proactive people. Um, basically, it will not take away from you to pay someone else a compliment. So 
what it <laughs> and that's the simplest way to put it when it says we can help script them as principle centered people if you see someone that is doing great things if you see a positive proactive value based independent principle centered person it is not going to hurt you any to praise this person or to compliment them or to point out something good that they're doing it is because that's what the abundance mentality is just because you give to them it's not going to take away from you if anything it's going to give to you because they are going to see that you're giving to them especially if you are giving to them with a genuine heart you're not giving to them because you're expecting to get something in return you're giving to them because you truly want to give to them and you truly see the great things that they are doing you truly just want to pay this person a compliment um and it, it's not going to hurt anything like and again me being a youtuber and being in youtube land um i just see the the snarky nitpicky people and to me it's like it's not gonna hurt me any if i'm watching someone's video and i i like an outfit that they're wearing or i like something that's in their background in their house or i just like something that they did or they said it's not gonna hurt me any to pay them a compliment it's not gonna take away from me to pay them a compliment i'm not gonna lose any subscribers or lose any views to pay this person a compliment if anything they might say hey thank you they might go check out my channel and they might see something that they like on my channel and we might end up collaborating together so it may pay off even more than i even thought just because i told this person hey i love such and such in the background of your of your living room because that's where they happen to be filming that day you know you just never know um and that's basically the most simplest thing and um, and that's based on that whole thing of people being a function of the social mirror. Again, people feed on the, the thoughts and opinions of others. And most of us know that. Um, and you have a good bit of people who know that and who use that to their advantage. So they are going to put out all this negative stuff to people and allow people to feed on the negativity that they put out. Um, just because they can for no other reason than because they know that people are going to feed on that negativity and they know that it's going to bring people down um and they do it for no other reason than because they can um and it goes back to when we were talking about the win 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 lose and the lose lose where if i'm miserable i'm going to make sure everyone else is miserable too so um, if I'm miserable, I'm going to put off negative vibes and I'm going to let everyone else feed off of my negative vibes and make them negative and miserable too. So we're all going to be miserable together. It's like, for what reason? <laughs> you know, no other reason than because I can. Um, but yeah, it, it's just, it's it's just, there's no point. Like, it's, it's not going to hurt you to, to just kind of, Put positivity out there pretty much because and he goes on to say at some time in your life you probably had someone believe in you when you didn't believe in yourself they scripted you did that make a difference in your life um, because pe people say it all the time you never know what's going on in a person's mind you never know um, what your kind word or your negative word could do to a person you never know um, how much a kind word could do to a person and change their life. You, you never know if that person is on their way to committing suicide and your kind word, your, your just, your simple hello or smile or, you know, you look really nice today could turn that person around from committing suicide. You, you never know what is going on in a person's mind. Um, but it, it's just one of those things, um. And this is something that I didn't, um, I didn't highlight, but it just stuck out to me really quick. And I wanted to point it out about self-fulfilling prophecies. And um, I just uh, paraphrase it really quick. But he was talking about one of the classic stories in the field of self-fulfilling prophecies. Um, was talking about a computer in England that was accidentally programmed um, incorrectly. Um, and he said, basically in academic terms, it labeled a class of bright, gifted kids as dumb and a class of basically dumb kids as bright and gifted. And that 
report that came from the computer um, was the primary criteria that the teachers used um, when they created their paradigms or their thought processes about these students at the beginning of the year. So it says, when the administration finally, did disco finally discovered the mistake five and a half months later, said they decided to test the kids again without telling anyone what had happened. Said, and the results were amazing. The bright kids had gone down significantly in IQ test points. They had been seen and treated as mentally limited, uncooperative, and difficult to teach. The teacher's paradigms had become a self-fulfilling prophecy, but scores in the supposedly dumb group had gone up. The teachers had treated them as though they were bright and their energy, their hope, their optimism, their excitement had reflected high individual expectations and worth for those kids. It says the teachers were asked what it was like during the first few weeks of the term. It says for some reason our methods weren't working, they replied, so we had to change our methods. So, and this is what, these were the teachers that were teaching the supposedly the dumb kids. So basically, these were the, the dumb kids that were labeled as bright. So the teachers realized that th they felt that their methods weren't working, so let's change our methods. And so this is one of those things that, to translate it to, to you guys, um, anytime you feel like what you are doing isn't working, um, and the first thing you want to do is blame the person or the people, the group of people or whatever, try changing your method and seeing if that helps. Instead of blaming the group or the person, um, that's something I've seen personally in my own personal relationship um, because you can't change people. Um, as much as you may want to, whether it's your kids, whether it's your spouse, whether it's whoever, you can't change people. Um, you can't change the way they are. You can't change the way they act. You can't change the way they react. Um, the only thing you can change is yourself. You, you only have control over yourself. So if you feel like you've been doing the same thing um, and it's not working, try changing your method. Instead of trying to hope that they'll get the picture and they'll change, just try changing your method. Um, you, you never know, they may eventually change, um, but you consistently doing the same thing and it not working, it's, it's not going to make them change because you keep doing the same thing. Because you keep nagging and nagging and nagging about the same thing, it's not gonna make them change eventually. It's not like I'm gonna nag them to death and eventually they're gonna get the point that I'm nagging them to death and they're gonna change. Maybe try to change your approach with how you bring this problem to them. Maybe change change something about your method and see if maybe the situation itself just doesn't bother you as much anymore. That That's, that's worked for me a lot. Um, when I've changed my approach, so it's not even the way I approach him about the situation anymore, is I change my approach about the problem itself and the problem itself doesn't even become a problem anymore. It doesn't even bother me anymore. But for the things that do still bother me, I just changed the way I approach him about it and he has then changed on his own. It's not because I'm nagging him about it anymore. I've completely changed the way I approach him about it and naturally he just changed on his own without me having to really say or do anything about it. So try that. Again, I wasn't even supposed to talk about it but it just happened to stand out to me. So, um, But the next thing he did say is, what do we, what do we reflect to others about themselves? And how much does that reflection influence their lives? We have so much we can invest in the emotional bank accounts of other people. The more we can see people in terms of their unseen potential, the more we can use our imagination rather than our memory with our spouse, our children, our coworkers, or employees. We can refuse to label them. We can see them in new, fresh ways each time we're with them. We can help them become independent, fulfilled people capable of deeply satisfying, enriching, and productive relationships with others. Um, so he said, go of taught, treat a man as he is and he will remain as he is. Treat a man as he can and should be and he will become as he can and should be. That statement is so powerful and um, 
so dear to my heart. It's something that um, I have followed a lot, especially with my son, with my older son, of course, my baby. He's on a whole nother plane right now. But um, with my, my older son, because I don't like saying, oh, well, he's just a kid. Well, he's just six years old. Well, he's just this, he's just that. Because when you tell someone, well, they're just this, they're only going to do just that. They're only gonna act like just that. They're only gonna do just what you allow them to do, just what you say they can do. So when you, by you saying that they're just this, you, you limit what you're even thinking that they're capable of. So I never say that my six-year-old is just a child, therefore he can't do this, he can't do that. No, yes, he's six years old, but I feel like he can do anything that any adult can do with supervision, with restrictions, with this or with that, but I'm not, there's nothing that I'm telling him that he can't do. So now there are some things that I will tell him he's not allowed to do because of his age, or because of this or because of that um and we're not talking about the illegal stuff or all that but i won't tell him no you can't do this because you're a child um so that is something again to keep in mind just just be mindful of what you are not even what you are saying but sometimes just what you are implying about someone based on how you treat them um or what you do allow them to do or what you don't allow them to do based on whatever reason. Um, so um, he talks about balance and renewal. Um, says the self renewal process must include balance renewal in all four dimensions of our nature, the physical, the spiritual, the mental, and the social emotional like i said that's why it's in that circle because it must be balanced no one is above the other no one comes before the other um they must all be balanced um it says although renewal in each dimension is important it only becomes optimally effective as we deal with all four dimensions in a wise and balanced way to neglect any one area negatively impacts the rest so i said synergy and renewal balanced renewal is optimally synergetic the things you do to sharpen the saw in any one dimension have positive impact in the other dimensions because they are so highly interrelated. Your physical health affects your mental health. Your, spirit, your spiritual strength affects your social and emotional strength. As you improve in one dimension, you increase your ability in other dimensions as well. The seven habits of highly effective people create optimum synergy among these dimensions. Renewal in any dimension increases your ability to live at least one of the seven habits. And although the habits are sequential, improvement in one habit synergetically increases your ability to live the rest. So the more proactive you are, which is habit one, the more effectively you can exercise personal leadership, habit two, and management, habit three, in your life. The more effectively you manage your life, habit three, the more quadrant two renewing activities you can do, habit seven. The more you seek first to understand, habit five, the more effectively you can go for synergetic win-win solutions, habits four and six. The more you improve in any of the habits that lead to independence, habits one, two, and three, the more effective you will be in interdependent situations, habits four, five, and six. And renewal, habit seven, is the process of renewing all the habits. It says, as you renew your physical dimension, you reinforce your personal vision Habit one, the paradigm of your own self-awareness and free will, of proactivity, of knowing that you are free to act instead of being acted upon, to choose your own response to any stimulus. This is probably the greatest benefit of physical exercise. Each daily private victory makes a deposit in your personal intrinsic security account. As you renew your spiritual dimension, you reinforce your personal leadership. Habit two, you increase your ability to live out of your imagination and conscience instead of only your memory, to deeply understand your innermost paradigms and values, to create within yourself a center of correct principles, to, excuse me, to define your own unique mission in life, 
to re-script yourself, to live your life in harmony with correct principles, and to draw upon your personal sources of strength. The rich private life you create in spiritual renewal makes tremendous deposits in your personal security account. As you renew your mental dimension, you reinforce your personal management, habit three. As you plan, you force your mind to recognize high leverage quadrant two activities, priority goals, and to act, excuse me, and activities to maximize the use of your time and energy. And you organize and execute your activities around your priorities. As you become involved in continuing education, you increase your knowledge base and you increase your options. Your economic security does not lie in your job. It lies in your own power to produce, to think, to learn, to create, to adapt. That's true financial independence. It's not having wealth, it's having the power to produce wealth. It's intrinsic. The daily private victory a minimum of one hour a day in renewal of the physical, spiritual, and mental dimensions is the key to the development of the seven habits, and it's completely within your circle of influence. It is the quadrant two focused time necessary to integrate these habits into your life to become principle centered. It's also the foundation for the daily public victory. It's the source of intrinsic security you need to sharpen the saw in the social emotional dimension. It gives you the personal strength to focus on your circle of influence in interdependent situations, to look at others through the abundance mentality paradigm, to genuinely value their differences and to be happy for their success. It gives you the foundation to work for genuine understanding and for synergetic win-win solutions, to practice habits four, five, and six in an interdependent reality. So that shows you how habit seven of sharpening the saw relates to all of the other six habits and how basically habit seven makes all the other six habits possible. So again, sometimes I refer to the application suggestions at the end, sometimes I don't. This is another situation where um, I feel like the application suggestions are really beneficial. Um, so one of the application suggestions at the end um, says to commit to write down specific sharpen the saw activities in all four dimensions every week to do them and to evaluate your, perform your performance and results. This is something that I have been doing for a while now because again I used to use the Franklin Covey system um, and the compass card that comes with the Franklin Covey system there is an area for you to write down your sharpen, sharpen the saw activities. Um, I, the one thing I did not do is I did not write down one for each of the four areas. So that is something that I will start doing. What I have been doing since I um, moved to the um, Hobonichi in my traveler's notebook is I have this area I'm trying to get to a page to show it to you I have this area um, this is my weekly page on my Hobonichi and at the top of the page I don't use it's like a top three checklist I don't use that because I don't write any tasks on my weekly except for my weekly checklist I use this weekly page strictly for time blocking because I do all of my tasks on my daily pages so for this top three area I use these um, it doesn't matter what day it's listed on I use these as my roles and goals um, and then on Sunday, I always have my sharpen the saw because Sunday is like my day of self renewal. Um, so it's just fitting that I put it there. But it again, all of these things happen throughout the week. Um, and what I do is I try to mark off if I've kind of accomplished these things throughout the week. And so there's only space for three. But what ends up happening is um, because there's seven days of the week, I normally end up with only four or five rolls and then my sharpen the saw so what i'll probably end up doing is putting my sharpen the saw in two on saturday and sunday and that way i have room for um at least four of the areas um or at least all four of the areas and then in some of the areas i may do um two different things um because like i know for my um for my mental I would put like at the very least the book that I'm reading that week because again starting in August my um, I have my reading challenge which is to read four books a month 
um, which would be the equivalent of one book a week. So I know I could at least list the book that I'm reading um, for my mental and then I may put something related to my writing or my journaling to go with my mental. Um, and then for my physical, of course, some kind of exercise or something related to nutrition and then my social emotional um, something there. So again, I have six spots that I can put stuff in and if I need more I can put more there's nothing wrong with having more than one for each area but at least to put one in each area so that is um, something that I am planning on doing um, what I am planning on doing as far as these seven habits um, the book club is over now um, if you guys have any questions always leave them below the videos I will continue to answer them um, this the book club is over but of course i will continue implementing these habits into my life and um of course my planner is like the center of my life so using my planner to help me implement these habits so as i'm doing that i will be doing updates um so if you guys are not subscribed to my channel or if you have not been subscribed to my channel before the book club like if you just started watching my channel um during the book club i would highly suggest you subscribe to my channel um, more importantly check below um in the description box you will find a link to my blog i would highly suggest that you follow my blog as well because going forward um my youtube channel is going to be transitioning a little bit into more of a lifestyle channel which i feel like the seven habits will fit nicely into that as well um so there will be more um lifestyle and home decor and grocery hauls and meal planning and mommy's type stuff there will still be planning because again everything in my life centers around my planner so my planning stuff will still be there as well um and normally um going forward um a lot of my planning related videos if i feel like it needs a corresponding blog post there will be but a lot of times there will be blog posts that may not necessarily have a video to go with it and those will be the lengthier um blog posts and so sometimes they will be specifically talking about the seven habits. Um, that is what I did with the 10 natural laws. Um, I did like the book study. Um, and then I went and I took some of the notes that I had from that book study and I started making individual videos um, on some of the topics. So I've already started going through this and taking some um, big chunks of material that I found in here and I will be making individual videos on those. Um, so like they were talking about, um, I'm trying to find some if I dog-eared some pages that I could pull out really quickly. Um, but like we were talking about the Quadrant 2 activities, um, there was something in here about the um, what if I, instead of trying to look in the book, I can just look at my <laughs> list of YouTube videos to make and that would be much, much easier to tell you from that list. Um, but I do plan on making more, um, but like I, I plan on making a video about using a planner for self-care because again, that is going to be a big thing for me. Um, Again, I will be implementing a new self-care routine starting in August. So once I have that going for a little bit, I'll have a video coming about that. And that will be definitely referencing back to Habit 7. Um, proactive versus reactive planners um, is something that was in the 7 Habits book. Um, let's see what else. I have a whole list of stuff in here. The six criteria of a Quadrant 2 tool how to become a quadrant two self manager. Um, so just a couple different things. So like I said, some of the information that we covered in the book club that I wanted to pull out and speak directly on that particular topic um, outside of the long um, live streams or the long YouTube videos. And I wanted to go more in depth on that one particular topic. So I'll have blog posts and YouTube videos and stuff coming. So again, if you just joined my channel, um, as a result of the book club, I would definitely highly recommend you subscribe to the channel um, because there will be more information coming with that. And then again, um, my YouTube channel will be transitioning a little bit more into more lifestyle type videos. So you guys will be seeing, um, basically the blog will be 
talking about the planning processes, whereas the YouTube videos will be showing how I implement the processes. So I'll be talking about how I meal plan on the blog and then on the YouTube channel, you'll be able to see my grocery haul and maybe some of the things that I actually cook in my meal plans and stuff like that. Um, so you might see how I project plan and how I, you know, do certain things with my home management and my home decor and, and things like that. And then on the YouTube channel, you may actually see me doing those things. Um, so that is the plan going forward. So if you guys have any questions about um, Habit 7, leave them below. Any questions in general about the book, um, anything that I did not cover um in depth or um i didn't touch on or that you have more questions on leave them below here um my plan was to do um a q a um for the last uh what do you call it the last live stream of the book club which obviously didn't happen because that was supposed to happen this last week of the book club um so if I have enough questions to do a seven habits Q&A, then I will. If not, I will answer the questions as they come. But if I feel like I keep getting a lot of questions about the same thing or just a lot of questions, um, then I will do another video that is just a Q&A. So if you guys have any questions, um, whether it's related to habit seven or just anything in general that I did not um, touch on or that you want more information about, um, or just something that you want me to make a video on, something that you read in the book that you feel like maybe I skipped over. Because like I said, I do feel like I skipped over um, like some of the examples that he gave um, and certain things that I felt like were very subjective um, and I felt like it would be based on someone's opinion. So I didn't want to give my opinion because it would not be the opinion of the masses. So if it's something like that that you guys have questions about or you just want my opinion on it or you just want me to open up a discussion about it to see how other people think about it just let me know down in the comments and I'll be sure to um, kind of start that discussion um, but other than that again thank you guys so much um, this book club has been very very rewarding for me because again I've been wanting to get through this book for a long long time and um, I knew that it would be very beneficial for me to get through the book um, but I just struggled to get through it just to make time to get through it and I knew that having other people to hold me accountable um, in some ways would help me to get through it um, and it really did and I, I, I really appreciate you guys again for sticking with me through the technical difficulties and the weather and then just me just being out of it for the past few weeks. Um, I greatly appreciate it. So again, any questions, comments you guys have, leave it below in the comment section and um, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.